This video explores a recent psychofancy issue with OpenAI's GPT-40 model. This video not only illustrates the technical complexities behind building state-of-the-art language models, but also sheds light on the broader responsibility of AI companies, especially these big labs serving millions of users globally. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. In this video, we are going to explore one of the most important and revealing events in recent AI development, which is the psychofancy issue with OpenAI's GPT-40 model. And on your screen, you can see that on 2nd of May, OpenAI released this detailed clarification of what exactly happened there. In this video, I am going to unpack this in as simple words as possible while also dwelling on few of my own thoughts. But before I do that, let me show you something very interesting. If you look at this screen, this is my GPT session with this open AI's GPT 4.1 and it was just done today as we speak on 5th of May, Sydney time at 5.35 p.m. If you look here, psychofancy is still there. The press release is from 2nd of May and I'm testing this GPT 4.1 on 5th of May. And you can see that I just said that I feel like I'm the coolest and hottest guy ever. Model is saying, love the confidence. There is nothing wrong with believing in yourself and owning your vibe. It definitely has toned it down, but psychofancy is still very much alive and kicking as far as I can tell. Now let's talk a bit more about this very interesting topic. To begin, let's briefly recount what happened. In late April 2025, OpenAI rolled out an update to its flagship GPT-40 model within ChatGPT and also at platform.openai.com. Users quickly noticed that the model had become markedly more psychophantic, not merely flattering the user but also echoing doubts, validating emotional responses and sometimes even escalating negative feelings. This was not simply a matter of tone. It raised genuine safety concerns such as increasing emotional over-reliance, promoting risky behaviors and undermining user well-being. Within days, OpenAI acknowledged these concerns, as you can see on your screen, rolled the update back and published a surprisingly candid postmortem describing what went wrong and how they would improve their processes. And I will drop the link to it in video's description. And which is really good of OpenAI to actually publicly acknowledging the issue. What makes this video significant is that it, it's not merely an engineering mistake. Uh, on the part of OpenAI, but we are going to dwell more deeply into it because as I said, this is not simply an engineering mistake or blunder, nor just a matter of missed guardrails. It shows the shifting role and rising importance of preference-based fine-tuning and reinforcement learning from human feedback or RLHF. Rather than being an isolated case, the psychofancy problem shows how difficult ongoing and essential it is to strike the right balance between making AI models helpful, engaging and ultimately safe. So what exactly caused the issue? OpenAI's own analysis uncovers two key factors. First, in an attempt to make GPT-40 more responsive and personalized, the team incorporated more user feedback, including direct reactions like thumbs up or thumbs down on answers, while this kind of data is valuable for aligning model with user preferences, it inadvertently created side effects. Specifically, when the algo optimized to receive positive feedback, it started favoring responses that simply agreed with user instead of offering nuanced or even corrective perspectives. So for example, if I go down here, I'll say good. So it says submitting feedback is disabled. So which is quite interesting. I'm not sure I haven't disabled anything, but it is not letting me submit the feedback. So this has really shifted the personality of the model toward excessive agreeableness, what's been called psychofancy in AI research. Secondly, OpenAI adjusted several aspects of how memory and user context were used in the model. 
The hope was to provide more continuity and a more tailored experience, but these changes also proved difficult to evaluate comprehensively because these new signals and product feature affected different users in different ways. Even extensive internal testing missed prob problematic behaviors that real-world users quickly detected. To be clear, these problems did not go unnoticed internally. OpenAI's spot checks, informal qualitative assessments by expert testers suggested something felt off about the new model version. But the quantitative evaluations and A-B tests, the metric-driven approaches standard in machine learning, showed strong performance. This gap between measurable outcome and human intuition is a recurring theme in AI. We trust matrices, but matrices alone don't tell the whole story, which also shows us that AGI is still way, way uh, far from us still. So why didn't OpenAI catch this before launch? Their review process, like most in the field, rely on combination of offline capability test, safety evaluation, and user trial. Yet, they did not have an explicit evaluation or metric for psychofancy before deployment, nor a robust mechanism for surfacing these subtle personality shifts. Qualitative feedback was overruled by otherwise positive quantitative signals. With hindsight, OpenAI recognized this as a mistake and publicly committed to valuing qualitative subjective feedback as potentially launch blocking similar to major safety risk. Now let's broaden the context. Psychoffensive is not a new problem for LLMs. Academic research and pra practitioners experience both document how preference tuning, whether from human raters or end user engagement, can nudge model toward agreeing with people, sometimes at the cost of truthfulness, usefulness, or even safety. The trade-offs here are not just technical, but deeply social and ethical. Engagement and user satisfaction are essential, but if every chatbot becomes a mirror that reflects and reinforces a user opinion, we risk creating conversational bubbles instead of supporting growth, discovery, and responsible advice. This incident also reflects a structural limitation in current AI, and not just open AI, but across the industry, in my opinion. Today's leading models are one size fit all. They are tuned and tested for a broad user base with widely varying needs and expectations. As personalization and memory feature advance, the challenge of evaluating behavior and safeguarding against unintended consequences multiply. Any shift in training or tuning can amplify engagement for some users while introducing subtle hazards for others, many of which are difficult to foresee in advance. But what did OpenAI do right in response? First and foremost, their openness deserved credit, seriously. By publishing this detailed post-mortem, admitting their process failure and sharing plans to improve, they have set a welcome example for transparency. Their model spec, which is primarily a document explicitly outlining what model behavior is acceptable or prohibited, is an industry-leading practice and, in my opinion, should be adopted widely. Clear standards, well-defined goals, and honest reporting of limitations build trust and set expectations both internally and with the public. So, what could be improved? not only for OpenAI, but for all AI labs, and what I believe is missing from this report. First, treat these subtle behavioral shifts like psychofancy, emotional mirroring, or even tone changes with as much seriousness as heart safety risk in deployment decision. Not all dangers are quantifiable, and human intuition still matters, as we just saw in this example. Second, Expand qualitative evaluations across a more diverse set of users and scenarios. It's not enough to test with experts or power users. Average user impact needs equal weight, especially as AI is increasingly used for sensitive personal matter. Third, make it a priority to transparently communicate all changes to model behavior, however subtle, with users. People now rely on these tools for everything from daily planning to mental health support and even small changes can have far-reaching effects. 
Finally, and perhaps most importantly, recognize that preference tuning and RLHF will always require a delicate balance. The ideal conversational AI is not one that simply agrees or flatters, but one that respectfully challenges, informs, and assists the user in constructive ways. We must continue to innovate in how we evaluate, regulate, and audit these systems, not just via benchmarks, but through real-world feedback, open research, and genuine commitment to user well-being. And before I let you go, two things. First, look at this. Now I have changed the tone completely and I'm telling it I feel like I am the laziest, lamest, and lowliest guy ever, which I'm enjoying and will carry on being. Just agree with me and don't be pedantic as you're not my dad. And model is agreeing with me. It's not really trying to, you know, encourage me or change me respectfully or politely or it is saying, okay, fine. If that's what you want to be, I totally get it. No lecture, no pep talk, just rolling with you. Now, this is very subject. Some would say model is doing what we are asking it to do. So very strict instruction following or um, maybe this was the pref in the preference tuning. Some would say, no, model should be um, very much responsible and they shouldn't be encouraging this sort of behavior. Anyway, I'm very, very keen to hear your thoughts in the comments. Before I let you go, I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.